Hi there. Today we're going to talk about how to start a business in Kentucky. So if you've got to this webpage, there's a good chance you're a foreign business who's looking to uh, seek authority to transact business in uh, Kentucky, or you're trying to start a new corporation, limited liability company, or partnership in this state. Um, regardless of uh, whether you're foreign or domestic, uh, you'll have the option of uh, signing in online and creating an account with the Kentucky Business One Stop Portal, filing that way, or by downloading the PDF files, which we have here on our site, uh, which will just be the registration forms, and you can send that in to the Secretary of State. Uh, we On the site, we've covered corporations, LLCs, and the three partnership site um, types, rather, they have. We also should we know that limited partnerships are uh, pretty much the same as limited liability, limited partnerships. So if you're going to if you click here and you're looking to form a uh, LLLP, um, that process will, will help you um, as well. So first thing you often have to do is search for a name. Now, if you're a new business, of course, you're going to need to come up with a name that uh, you know just works for your company. Uh, if that name is already taken in the state of Kentucky, you're going to have to uh, obviously choose another one and how to find that out is if you're filing online you'll find there's like a name availability search incorporated into the filing forms uh, those filing through PDF files should perform a business entity search and if you click on our link that we have here um, you'll notice that there's a tutorial for that as well uh, also businesses are just looking to get information about a particular company or um, if you're looking to purchase a certificate of good standing or existence, file your annual report. This can all be done using this function. Uh, earlier I spoke about the Kentucky Online Registration. Uh, the portal they use is called the Kentucky Business One Stop Portal. It's a, it's a really convenient website. They have all the necessary filing forms and everything you might need there. Uh, you're going to need to first create an account with them though. So it's, I mean, essentially just like creating an email account. You just need your first, last name, a new password, and an email, which they'll send a um, confirmation email to. And then you can use the username that they send you uh, to sign into your into your account. And that's all there is to it. It's free. It's totally worth it. It just takes like a minute. Uh, as I said before, first step, doing a business entity search. I won't go over it again, but... Um, you can also uh, make a name reservation. This is especially handy for foreign entities if they're wanting to reserve their name for 120 days before filing. You think that you know you might need some time to file, but you know that you want to you know operate in Kentucky. Name reservation is where it's at. It's, I think it's about 15 bucks for that. So once you've taken care of your name, uh, you can log into your online account or you can download our filing forms and just fill in the necessary registration. Um, applications uh, either online or at home and if you click on each one of these entity types uh, you'll get a detailed filing process for each one of those two. Now step three, providing that you finish the forms you provided all the necessary information um, if you're filing online you'll get to a point where you can pay the filing fee and you can choose between a prepaid account or payment by credit card uh, so if you're a domestic entity, you're going to have to pay $40 foreign entities across the board. doesn't matter what kind of entity you are. It's going to be $90. And as soon as you're done paying online by credit card or prepaid account, uh, you finish filing. Um, however, if you're filing through the downloading of a PDF file and printing it out, you're going to want to attach a check made it to the Kentucky State Treasurer to your application. And then you're going to want to mail both of those to this uh, address here and that will be sort of the end of your uh, filing process. I already talked about the name reservation it's pretty straightforward. I was right, yeah it's $15. Uh, certificate of existence sometimes it's called certificate of good standing. Um, this is something that's not required when you're filing but if you do plan on expanding your business outside um, Kentucky and you're uh, you know obviously you'd be a domestic entity then you're going to want to get a certificate of existence because most Secretary of States uh, require that you present one because it proves sort of legitimacy um, in that you filed all your annual reports, paid all the necessary filing fees for that, um, and that you you know operated lawfully 
in uh, accordance with the uh, state statutes of uh, Kentucky. Uh, it's ten dollars a copy. Uh, this can be done online, or you can request it by um, sending in a request corporate documents form. Uh, and again, both processes don't take very much time. Uh, and as usual, I totally recommend using the online function agreements. Uh, so for a corporation, you're going to want to print off the corporate bylaw template. Uh, LLC operating agreement is obviously for limited liability companies and partnership agreements for partnerships. So what these do is it's pretty much an, uh, an agreement amongst the managing members of your company on how you plan on running your business. All the internal affairs, like how many annual meetings you're going to have, um, the initial capital contribution of each managing member, uh, you know, the power of each managing member. If you're a corporation, the shareholders, the board of directors, stuff like that. It's totally necessary if you plan on, oops, if you plan on uh, organizing your um, your company effectively. And finally, this is, I should say that um, those agreements aren't required by law. So it's sort of an optional thing, but it's really highly recommended that you that you write one out. Uh, usually done um, after you're finished filing with the Secretary of State, but you can do it before too. Now, an employment identification number is one of the vital steps that come for sure after you're finished filing for formation. Um, if you're a foreign entity, there's a pretty good chance you already have one of these. I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, pretty much it's just allowing the IRS to recognize you as a legitimate tax-paying entity when you file your taxes. Uh, without one of these, you're not going to be able to do any sort of financial procedure either, like opening bank accounts, getting corporate credit cards, stuff like that. Totally necessary that you have an employment identification number. Now, you can get one of these for free online using the IRS website or by downloading the application form, SS4. We've got tutorials for each one of those here and here. And that's usually sort of the final step in your filing process. So I hope this was all helpful. Um, best of luck.